Hello friends and welcome back to another video. My name is Julie if you're new here and this is going to be my first book haul ever on this channel and also my first book haul of the year. So I have ordered some books that I have been waiting to buy for a long time. At least that's for most of them and some of them I've already read as well but I'm going to tell you all about it when I show you these books. I'm going to begin with the books that I am buying new because I have some that are new, some that I bought used and we are going to start with the new ones. I got this big boy of a package here and we're going to open it together. Let me just quickly Okay, so I just opened the package and I'm going to show you the different books right now. First of all, we have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And I actually bought the English version of this. I didn't even remember that. <laughs> um, but I think this cover is really beautiful. It's so pretty. And also the story sounds very interesting. So it says, the year is 1926 and Shanghai hums to the tune of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the streets red, leaving the city in chaos. Juliet Kai is the proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Roma Montagov is the prodigal son of her greatest rivals, the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. He is also Juliet's first love and first betrayal. When a deadly madness strikes gangsters on both sides, the people start to whisper of a contagion and a monster in the shadows. And as the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns and grudges aside and work together. Doesn't this just sound absolutely fascinating? I think this is such an interesting setting. I'm trying to read more stories that not only take place in the US and UK, so this is a great one for that and I haven't really read many books that involve gangs so I'm very curious to see how I will enjoy this one. And of course it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling which I'm very excited about. Okay, the next book that we have in this little package or large package rather is this one, The Little Cottage in Ireland by Julie Kaplan. This is the German version because I think the German versions have much more beautiful covers than the English versions. Let me know in the comments what you think about these covers. So this one is, I don't know which part in the series. There are so many, I've read all of them so far and I can't wait to read this one. They are like my cozy go-to books that I also recommended in my Happy Book Rags video. And this is why I think I'm really going to like this one. I mean, I liked all of them, so this can only be really good. Honestly, I didn't even really check what this was about before I bought it, but it is about Hannah and Hannah goes to cooking school in Ireland. She isn't originally from there, she's from Manchester and she needs an escape and this is also what the whole series of books really is about. It's about needing an escape, going away from home, going to a different country and that often, it often also includes some type of like cooking, baking, eating, stuff like that. So that's why I like the series and I think I will like this book. Next up we have Hellbent by Lee Badugo. I know this is part two of the series and I haven't even read part one. 
but I know that I will read the second one. It doesn't even matter if I enjoy the first one or not, I will at least give the second one a try, but I'm pretty sure I will like the series. So yeah, I bought the second one and I'm not going to read the blog because I don't know what happens in the first one and I don't want to spoil it myself, but the cover is actually <laughs> pretty creepy. <laughs> this bunny doesn't look good. He looks like he's been going through some stuff. I really hope no animals are going to be harmed in these books. Oh my god. So that's that one. The fourth book is The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And I like this cover the best. This is why I bought this one. This is also why I bought the English one. This is like the only reason why I chose to read books in German or in English is <laughs> which cover I like better and which ones are available to me. So yeah, but I really like the way that this feels. It feels a little bit like it's um, velvet. I don't know. It feels really good. And it's huge. Like in comparison to the other books, this is... <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit bigger. See, in comparison to all of them, this is so much bigger. I I hope this will fit somewhere in my shelves, but I'm pretty sure it will. I feel like everyone has read this book and I haven't. This is also why it's on my 23 for 2023 TBR. And I thought like, I'm not going to pick this up as an audiobook and I think it's also not one that I would read as an ebook, which is why I bought it because otherwise I would probably never go read it. And yeah, now I have it and I can finally start reading this one. I actually think that I will like this a lot. And I can't wait to read this, but now I have so many books that I really want to get to and I hope I can read this before uni starts again, but I doubt I will be able to, which means that I will probably only get to this after June. And that's such a long time. Oh my God, I want to read this right now, but I can't. Why do I have so many readings plans for this year? It's like, I want to read every single book. Why is life as a reader so difficult, please? Please tell me, how do you do it? I don't know. I am so bad at prioritizing, <laughs> especially physical books, because I can easily listen to audiobooks and read many books like that. But picking up physical books, I kind of need to plan which ones I want to read first. And then I won't get as many in because I don't really have the time to read that much. So yeah. This one probably has to wait a little bit because I'm also going on vacation. So the next one is actually a series. It's the Heartstopper series. So yeah, I got this one as a box set and actually the box is a little bit damaged. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but yeah, I don't mind though because I'm not going to leave this in a box probably because there are only three books in here and there are two more books in the series, so I will probably put all of them next to each other in the shelves and I don't see the point of putting three in a box and two just standing next to that box. <laughs> That's why I'm probably going to take these out of the box. Wow, how many times can you say box in a few sentences? So yeah, I'm going to take these out of the box now and show you what they look like. These are the books. This is the first one. That's the upper one. Oh wow, it actually has the Netflix thing on there. I thought that would be a sticker. It's not a sticker, it's on the cover. That's interesting. That's the second one. And that's number three. Oh, I'm just looking through the pages and I actually really like the drawing style of this. Oh, I'm so excited to read this. This looks so good. So if you're not familiar, I will read this to you. 
Charlie and Nick are at the same school, but they've never met. Until one day, they are made to sit together. They quickly become friends, and soon Charlie is falling hard for Nick, even though he doesn't think he has a chance. But love works in surprising ways, and Nick is more interested in Charlie than either of them realized. This is going to be so cute! Especially because it says more or less that it's friends to lovers, and that is one of my favorite tropes. Okay, so these were all of the books from that package, and now I'm going to get my other package and let you know what was in there. So, this is the other box. Oh my god, it's much bigger and much heavier. And I already opened it as well. So all of these are used books, which is why some of them are in better condition than others. But actually all of them look really good from what I've seen so far. And I really like buying used books because I don't want to add to more stuff being produced that actually doesn't need to be there. And that's why I'm always trying to find books that are used but in a good condition so I can actually expand my collection and not feel bad about owning so many and reading so many books in physical form. And I also really try to only buy books that I know I will like and that I want to keep on my shelves that I'm sure I will love and enjoy. And that's also why I bought some books that I have already read because the books on my shelves are more of a collection of books that remind me of good times and books that I enjoyed reading, stories that I might want to revisit. And I used to buy a lot of books where I wasn't sure about whether I would like them or not and then ending up unhauling them. And I want to really try to not do that anymore. So let's get started. The first book that I bought is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. And this one is the German edition. Actually looks... Okay, I would say it has a few minor dark spots, but I think these can be removed with an eraser. And this book I bought because I read Normal People and I really enjoyed it. So that's also why I bought the German version, because I have the German version of Normal People and I like my books to be in kind of the same edition if I have books by the same author. So they match. So this is apparently a book about four young adults who are friends and who know each other and who are also in relationships with each other. So I think the most important thing about this is not going to be the story, but the writing and the empathy that comes with it, because that's something that I really enjoyed about normal people, that you could really tell that Sally Rooney is an empathetic writer. And I like that a lot in storytelling. So that's why I bought this book. Next one up is Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. In German, this is actually called Summer of Hearts and Souls. I have no idea why they always <laughs> use English titles that are different from the English title. I think it's to make it more accessible to Germans, but it's why? The reason why I bought this is because Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite authors and I just always love her stories. I love her storytelling and the twists that she gives to things so and that her stories are thought-provoking a lot of the time. So yeah, this is about two young adults spending a summer together from what I've gathered. So this is about Bea who's Mother just has passed away and she needs to move in with her dad, who she actually doesn't know that well. And, and then she meets her neighbor and I think they start connecting. And I'm really interested in that because I think the family dynamic in this one is going to be very interesting, maybe also very relatable. Okay. The next book is one that I have already read. This one is An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green. John Green is one of my favorite young adult authors. I have read so many books by him. Probably one of the authors that I have read the most books by. 
and I remember really liking this story and I slowly want to start collecting John Green books because I really like most of his stories and I think it will be a great collection to have in the future. And I also really enjoy the way that they all look because they all kind of have the same style and yeah, it's just pretty. And this one was a particularly funny story because it's about a guy who only dates Catherine's and he has dated 19 Catherines, which as a teenager, that's that's a pretty high number of people to date. I don't know how people do that. I can't even talk to one person without embarrassing myself, but good for him. So this is a very good young adult book, in my opinion. If you haven't read this one, it's really fun. And it's also a pretty short book, so you can get through it pretty quickly. The next one is Shadow and Ember, or in English it's called The Shadow in the Ember, I believe. Also, a weird translation of the title to just leave some parts out of it and just call it Shadow and Ember, but okay. So this is kind of a kind of the story before Blood and Ash, and I don't know if this will be interesting or not, but I hope so. Some of the history stuff that was explained in the Blood and Ash series was pretty boring, so this could go two ways, but I have started the series and I want to continue it. And that for me also means that I will be reading the prequels and sequels and whatever. So yeah, so yeah, this is a pretty long one as well. It has, I think it's like 800 pages, so I don't know when I will read this. But first of all, I need to finish Crown and Bones because that's the one before that. I still have 200 pages left. I would read to you what it says in the blurb, but even though this is German, it's still really confusing to me and I don't know if that would tell you anything mildly interesting if you haven't read the other books. So yeah. So my camera just died, but I'm back. The next book that I bought is actually also one that I have read before. It's The Hunger Games. And I want to slowly collect these because I think it's a beautiful edition. I have one already and this is the second one I got because I would rather buy all of these used and that's why I'm not buying all of them at once. And yeah, this one is part two of the Hunger Games and I think it's so beautiful. Look at this. These are the book edges. They are not sprayed but it's like a second little layer that they've put there. So it opens up like this. I think this is so cool. Very special and yeah that's why I want to have this edition of the Hunger Games. I really like the cover as well because it's so shiny. <laughs> And I plan on rereading the series when I have collected all of them. I actually bought another one of those. It is this one. It's um, the new one that came out and it's in the same edition. So it also has these edges and opens up like this and actually has this cool thing on the inside, look at this! So yeah, I'm actually very excited for this one because I haven't read this one yet, but I think I will only read this when I have reread The Hunger Games because it's been such a long time since I've read the series and I want to remember it correctly when I read this book. Oh yeah, I forgot to say the title of this one, it's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. and but I got the German editions and I'm really glad I got this one secondhand because it's actually really expensive so I could save some money on that and it's in really good condition. I think it looks like nobody has touched this before so couldn't be better. Next up we have a non-fiction book. I don't read 
many nonfiction books, but this one caught my interest. It is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I think this could be very interesting. I've been wanting to read this since it came out, but I never got to it. And to be honest, I also thought it was a little bit too expensive because it's a hard cover and yeah, hard covers are expensive. And I definitely don't read any non-fiction books as audiobooks or listen to them as audiobooks. That's just not my preference. I know I will get bored if I don't have the pages in front of me. So this is the book and it also includes some photos in the middle. So I'm really excited to read this because I think her story could be very interesting. And I could learn a lot about American culture while reading this. And the last book is actually part of a very old German series. Very old. I mean, it's a series I have read when I was a child. That's what I mean by that. It is uh, the third part of the series. I've already read all of them, but I only own the first two for some reason. I think I got the third one from the library when I was a child. And it always kind of bothered me that I only have the two parts because this is such an important childhood memory for me that I really want to have all of them on my shelves. It's um, the third part of the Ink Heart trilogy by Cornelia Funke. And it's one of the first fantasy books I ever read, or maybe even the first fantasy book I ever read. And it kind of sparked my love for reading and books and it has a very special place in my heart. This is why I wanted to own this book. Now I have it and I can put it on my shelf. The series is finally completed. So yeah, these were the 15 books I bought and I'm very happy with the choices I've made. I'm so excited to read the books that I haven't read yet. And I'm also excited to own the books that I have read before. It books just make me so happy and I'm really glad I spent my money on that even though it was expensive of course even though I bought some of these second hand it's still a lot of money and I'm really thankful that I am able to afford this but also I don't buy that much books that often first of all because of course it's expensive but second of all I really want to only buy books with intention and that's why I also decided to buy like 15 at a time because I have been planning to buy all of these. It wasn't, these definitely weren't like impulse buys or anything. Because as I said, I want to try to avoid that. Let me know if you have read any of these books and, and what your last book purchase was. See you in my next video. Bye.